Um, so, wow, uh, Lisa gave a great presentation. Just so you know, someone who's been in the field, that she spent a lot of time to give you some good perspectives and resources and what it takes. And it is a lot of time also. And uh, thank you very much, Chris, for uh, bringing me here. I don't really have much prepared, and the reason being is that Chris was trying to get Roy McElroy to be the guest speaker, but uh, due to unfortunate circumstances, you got me instead. So, But as Chris was saying, um, I currently work at uh, Vanguard. I moved from New York uh, to Philadelphia three years ago. And the reason why Chris wanted me to speak was because I can give a little bit of a non-traditional perspective. So my job is necessarily to come here and advise you on what you need to do. It's just to give you a perspective that golf is important, golf has been important for everyone, and it can always be important for you. So currently right now, I play a lot of amateur tournaments, and it's a very big part of my life. And so what Chris wanted me to do is to come here initially and speak about academics and golf. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change it a little bit. And I'm actually going to talk about golf and dot, dot, dot. Because golf can be something that's a big part of your life. It has been for me. And I love the competition. But at the same time, as much as golf has been important for me, golf has never been the, let's say, the number one decision in my life. So fast forward back to 1993. And I had just finished uh, playing my third US Junior Amateur and did very, very well that year and was you know, just really ecstatic about how my golf was going. What ended up happening was that I got a lot of calls from coaches because they wanted me to play uh, for, on their program. And my first question to the college golf coach was, nothing about really the program itself, the golf program, but what's, what's your pre-med program like? Uh, what's your finance program like? Because I was lucky in the sense that I had a good idea that I wanted to pursue academics as my number one priority in college. And I know that golf is not going to be the number one priority to everyone, and that's what Chris and I uh, were, were speaking about. So long story short, I had to go through the entire recruiting process, a lot of which uh, Lisa had, uh, had, had, had discussed about. It was very difficult, and uh, just so you know, I would definitely um, second her recommendation that the process be started early. So, uh, you know, freshman year, definitely a, a good start. But really, as soon as you have a sense of wanting to play college golf, I think it's a good idea to think about, um, you know, where you want to play. You don't have to have all the answers right away. It's not that easy. But just think about it. And, uh, and as per the NCAA rules, a coach can't contact you until a certain time. But you're always welcome to contact the coach ask questions about the program, and even ask the coach for advice on what are you looking for? What do I need to do? And that's a good start. So, um, you know, that's, I, I would definitely think that's something uh, good to consider for, uh, for possibly going to a college golf career. So, continuing in, you know, what, what I'm going to be talking about, which is golf and dot, 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 just wanted to give you a little bit of perspective into, let's say, my experience eventually going to play for Columbia University. Um, it was not easy. In fact, uh, my second semester of my freshman year, I failed a couple of exams, never having failed an exam before, being a straight-A student in high school, and almost had to, um, you know, I actually had to drop a couple of classes in that semester, and was actually almost ineligible because I was going to drop into a part-time student status. So it was a very, very difficult transition, and the reason being that all of a sudden, when you're in college, you're away from your, 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 your support structure that you've had for most of your lives. Your parents aren't going to be there anymore. And basically, your schedule is really set on what classes you decide to take and how you choose to spend your free time. And I did not do a very good job with it. But fortunately, I stuck with it and was able to graduate in four years on time, having played four years of college golf. And typical day would be, um, waking up at 6 o'clock, sometimes pre-dawn, doing my workouts. Because Columbia had to travel 15 minutes to get to their practice sessions, 
every player had to leave 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. free during the day so we could take a van up to practice. So being in New York City at Columbia, we actually had to go to Westchester County uh, up in Yonkers, which was a 15, 20 minute drive every day. And so all the players were expected to leave their 1 to 6 p.m. during the afternoon free for, for practice. And so what that meant for me was the workouts have to be done in the morning, Classes have to be scheduled between 8 a.m. to finish by 12.55 p.m. I would run to the cafeteria, grab lunch in a box, and I'd run to the van where all the other players would be meeting. We'd eat on the van ride up, practice, finish at around maybe 5.30, and come back in time for 6 p.m. classes, which often ended at 9 o'clock. So that was a lot of sacrifice there. And um, Evan, Matt understands that he's shaking his head. It's, uh, and he, he was talking about sacrifice. And that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's one of the big key words about the balance, is that you're never going to have time in a 24-hour day to do everything that you want to. It's always good to pursue what you want to, but understand that you know, as you go on through life, a lot of things are about choosing between one versus another. And don't worry about making mistakes. It's good to make a decision early on, and uh, it's important to know what you're getting yourself into. But at the same time, you know, things may, may not necessarily look good now, may actually look better later on. So understand that you're going to have to make decisions and you're going to balance, and then just commit to your decision and move on. So what did all that time and sacrifice mean? Because it meant that I couldn't go to a lot of parties in the weekends that I wanted to. Um, it couldn't mean necessarily that a couple of golfers joined uh, fraternities. I couldn't do it studying pre-medicine in college just because of the, work, the academic workload. So what was, what was, the, what was the benefit? Um, I think the benefit was, I think there's several benefits that you could take away from putting in all the sacrifice is that, well, Eventually down the road, whether it's your own families, whether it's uh, your job, your professional life, and uh, you know, I'm not necessarily trying to tell you to think about all that, but I guess the main point is, is that you're always gonna have to make decisions and to balance things for the rest of your life. And one is that you'll be very well prepared to do that later on, and two is that a lot of prospective employers also look at those things very highly. There's a reason why some you know, financial firms, like for, for example, I went into the financial industry after college. That was the route that I wanted to choose. And I can tell you that having had that balance, that I've had to make those sacrifices and balance my academics with my golf, but stick with it and stick with it for four years, was it was very good in the eyes of a lot of companies because they thought, okay, here's someone who really understands what it means to focus on their priorities and juggle their time correctly. And I can tell you that uh, that's going to be something that you're going to learn playing four years of golf, and it's going to serve you very, very well. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, um, and, and the, other, the other benefits that you can have, for example, are you're going to be very good friends, you're going to be very close with your teammates, and then also you're going to be able to uh, benefit from things like a lot of golf programs, they've been around for a very long time. And I can tell you that a lot of alums, uh, are in very many different fields and walks of life. They can be great resources where they can give you advice before you graduate, or even when after you graduated, I know that in many cases a lot of alumni you know, really are actively engaged in helping players um, uh, navigate their professional careers and steer them toward jobs. So for example, when I had graduated college, um, a couple of alums who were in the financial industry gave me some good recommendations but also they were able to steer me toward a few firms and also kind of um, make sure that they forwarded my name to the, uh, to, the, to the recruiting directors there to make sure that they knew who I was. And uh, that was one thing that was very important for me. And uh, so the, the second part of, um, I guess, my, uh, my perspective is that uh, after a few years working, I did return to Columbia as the golf coach. And, uh, Basically, um, I was going to grad school at the same time, but also I wanted to coach because I, I really enjoyed doing that, with golf being a very important part of my, my life. And what I wanted to do was also give you some perspectives on what a golf coach is looking for, especially if you're looking for, um, you know, if you're looking to play in a school where, you know, golf takes, let's say, a, um, you know, golf is just as important as academics. 
Um, in, the, in the case of Columbia, we, we have several options. But one of it is that a school like Columbia or a lot of let's, uh, a lot of schools where academics are a priority, you have to deal with the admissions because a lot of these schools have minimum admissions requirements that are that, that are that are fairly high, and so for a coach it's very challenging because you can have you can have identi identified several players that you really think are going to be good golfers that can help your team, but admissions may not necessarily. Be, you know, may not necessarily accept their academic backgrounds. So it's important as a coach to know that. And why is that important? Why, is, why am I sharing that with you? Because I think that's part of the reason why you need to be contacting, communicating with coaches very early on. And communication is very, very important. So as a coach, I want to share with you another story where um, it's actually a story about two recruits that I uh, recruited during my time there. Uh, one one uh, one student athlete's name was Ali, and the other uh, student athlete's name was Chris. So Ali and I had a, had very good communication. I knew exactly what I um, that I knew exactly what he wanted from the program, and we communicated a lot. And we knew the fit was perfect for him uh, for him to come to Columbia. And as it turns out, because we communicated well during the recruiting process, and while he was a player, he was able to get what he wanted. And as a coach. I had four good years with Ali. He was a, ended up being one of our senior captains and had four very good years as a player. Chris, on the other hand, was a phenomenal golfer in, um, in junior golf. And um, I believe that one of the mistakes was during the communication period where I did not speak enough with Chris and Chris also did not speak enough with his parents. So what ended up happening was that I thought that Chris would have been a phenomenal golfer. He was ranked top 50 in the country, and um, he was just a great golfer. And I know his parents wanted him to come to Columbia because they valued the Columbia education. So Chris came in, and uh, his first year, he was an outstanding golfer. Won a couple of tournaments, and was at practice every day when it was tough for me to get all the other players to come to practice. And I just thought that you know he, this is going to be great. But then his sophomore year, he started to have difficulty in his classes. And as I, as, as I was communicating with other players on the team, what I was finding out was that uh, even though he was telling me and keeping me up to date with his classes, that he wasn't communicating. He wasn't being perfectly forthright with what he wanted to do. And that was that he wanted to play golf. So after his sophomore year, he actually ended up having to drop a couple of classes. And after his sophomore year, he actually qualified for the US Open. Uh, he played at Oakmont and um, you know, had, just was, you know, did really well and had a great summer. And he promptly dropped out from Columbia uh, right after that to turn professional. So the, I guess the, 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 the takeaway from this was that um, it's, it's, it's important to, know, to, to communicate because it's an important decision where you go to school and what you want to do. And in the case of Chris, I should have identified early on that Columbia wasn't going to be the right fit for him. He wasn't having fun at Columbia. And part of making these decisions in life is that sometimes the right decisions aren't always what are practically the right decisions, but sometimes it's what you want to do. Because since Chris wasn't having fun, and because he wanted to play professional golf, because the communication wasn't there between Chris and the coach, and Chris and his parents, he, had, you know, he ended up uh, spending two years at Columbia where he wasn't having fun. So it, it's a good idea to really you know, to, you know, understand uh, during, during the recruiting process also, communicate with the coach, uh, communicate with uh, you know, between, communication between the uh, student athlete and their parents, and make sure that you're going to a place that offers you what you, uh, what you want to do. So, so, um, so, so going back to sort of the, the rewards of all the sacrifice is that a lot of our players now, uh, we have a couple of uh, graduating uh, student athletes who, who I had coached who are in the golf industry. They're, they're either playing golf or the one, one's a, a writer and reporter for the USGA. Um, but then we have also players who have gone into other walks of life in finance and medicine, finance and medicine, trying to balance their, uh, their, their golf and their academics. And um, you know, and so you know, just kind of going back, I think that you know, 
just making sure that you start the lines of communication early with the coaches is a good takeaway. And uh, you know, I, I do wish you all the best of luck with, uh, with, with the process. So.